joining us and the millions watching around the world. Yes, ladies and gents, welcome back to In The Red Corner podcast with me, Ross. I hope everyone's well on this Sunday. Uh, today, I'm excited to have the BKFC Bulgaria boss man. Uh, we had a bit of a giggle about that before. <laughs> uh, and It's all about the, the BKFC Bulgaria show, the first BKFC show in Europe. So again, every time the BKFC are doing something, it's pretty much making history at the moment. It's the fastest growing sport in the world. And uh, if you haven't seen it, go and watch it because... Download the BKFC app. It's uh, it's about eight pound a month or something like that. Well worth the money. You get to see all the shows from all over the globe. Um, so without further ado, I'll bring him in. Here he is, Lubo Gudjev. Yes, Lubo, how are you? How you doing, Ross? Thank you for the invite. Oh, no problem. Thank you very much for coming on in the Red Corner podcast. I appreciate it. Thank you. I'm saying there, exciting times for Bulgaria. You know, hosting the BKFC Absolutely. show. It's yes. Amazing. Um, so, obviously, you've been in the fight game for a long, long time. And I've watched back a few of your old fights from, you know, 14, 15 years ago yeah. uh, in, in MMA. Uh, tell us a bit more about yourself, though. How, how did you get started and things? Um, so, my life took an interesting turn when I went to Abu Dhabi back in 1998. I was just 20 years old. I haven't practiced any martial arts at the time. I just uh, finished my school, finished the military service, and I went back in pursuit of a uh, better life, I would I would say. And then I, I wanted to, to start practicing some sort of martial art. And I've only heard about Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu from the UFC. So I found a, a place in Abu Dhabi and I started practicing. Uh, as it turned up, the club belonged to one of the president's sons, one of the sheikhs, who... Uh, found the ADCC, the grappling championship. So I got involved with him. I worked for him uh, with the Sheikh for about seven years. I was the head judge of the ADCC championship for a few years, manager of the club, and I obviously practiced uh, all the time. And then uh, I decided to pursue an MMA career, came back to Bulgaria. I started fighting, uh, teaching jiu-jitsu, teaching MMA, and competing. And then back in 2011, uh, the guys from Abu Dhabi called me back again to to manage the technical side of the Jiu-Jitsu project, which was, uh, at, at that time, it just became mandatory for all government schools and the uh, armed forces of the UAE. So I worked for, for about five years on, on that project. Uh, I was in charge of technical programs, events, obviously, we found the Abu Dhabi uh, Warriors MMA League, which is now renamed to UAE Warriors. Then I worked uh, about five years for the military as a consultant for these programs, the combatives and BJJ. And then I came back in Bulgaria in 2021, uh, started my own business and started promoting the events yeah. back again in Bulgaria. <laughs> and that's LG Sports. Yeah. LG yes, Sports, yeah, right? yeah. correct. And so, yeah, I mean, amazing life, Abu Dhabi and, you know, working for the military, fantastic. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sounds like you've been around a bit. Um, so how did the, how did it come to be, you know, for the BKFC? Did they contact yourself? Uh, so I had an ambition to, to, to do something innovative and disrupting in the industry in, in Bulgaria. Um, I was the guy who brought the first professional MMA show back in 2007. And now when I came back in 2021, I'm like, all right, right, let's. I, I want to do something great for for the country. I, I want more people to know that 
Bulgaria, although small as a country, it's a nice place to have events. Uh, we have certain features of uh, both economic and geostrategic, if you will, uh, aspects that help for uh, for making uh, good quality events. So I went on a hunt to see which promotion might be interested, you know, and a few months prior to my ambition, I, I watched BKFC on Instagram. It appeared on my feed and I was like, whoa, like this just looked something. What, what we felt like MMA was back in the day. Uh, yeah. I feel that's what BKFC is right now is the new, uh, exciting thing to, to watch. It just uh, takes away, strips away, in my opinion, the the opportunity for the fighters to take advantage of the rules. Yeah. So it, it brings it back to, to the roots of fighting. Uh, so as it turned up, a friend of mine from the US was in, involved with BKFC. He introduced me. So after a few messages and stuff, I had the honor to meet uh, David Feldman in Miami last year. Uh, I had the opportunity to to share my beliefs that I think it will be a good step for BKFC to to try Bulgaria as a first event in Europe uh, and explore the southeast part of Europe, uh, unlike other American promoters who who target France, Germany, you know, more countries in Central Europe. Yeah. So he was interested. We continued negotiations. And now, now we're in the game, and I'm super excited, and I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, I've got a little video here of uh, of Dave Feldman when uh, you were there. What's up, guys? We were here in Las Vegas at the ABC convention, getting bare knuckle rules passed, unified for the whole entire country, really the whole entire world. I'm here with Lubo. We are launching BKFC Bulgaria November 17th. It's going to be an unreal show. Yeah, man. I'm excited, man. I'm excited, excited to get there. Than you are, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. going to be great, man. Make sure you tune in November 17th, Sofia, Bulgaria. It's going to be unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's a great man, isn't he? For what he's doing with yeah. the sport. Yes, you know? absolutely, absolutely. He's a visionary man, and and pretty much started something against the system, and now the rules uh, were voted. So now it was uh, BKFC rules is considered an official rule set in the US. So I think that was a great success on his yeah. behalf. It's just the next step for the sport to, you know, keep getting yeah. bigger and bigger. And I think David just announced as well that um, it's going to be in, it's going to be over 60 shows next year. And I think it's going to be in 12 countries as well. So, I mean, unbelievable. <laughs> it's just like I say, it's just growing yeah. and getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> So especially yeah. for like you know the Bulgaria now the first show in Europe like I was saying, you know it's it's going to open up a gateway for lots of other lots of other countries to get involved and in, and in Bulgaria Bulgaria on the map as well. In the yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the card looks unbelievable. Like I say, we've got um, fighters from all over the the world coming. Uh, so is it is it kind of like Bulgaria versus the rest of the world? Well, in a way, yes, because as a first event, uh, I, I really wanted to to bring a lot of people, a lot of spectators. BKFC deserves the spotlight and deserves an event of high quality. And the only way to do that was to, to try and invite all the popular Bulgarian fighters. And when we held the the casting, the, the tryouts, I was surprised to see most of them were already signed up and anxious to to be accepted. And once the tryouts were over, the only remaining few that didn't come for the tryouts started calling because they felt this thing is serious, this thing is real. Like, it's the first time an American promotion comes to Bulgaria yeah. to basically give an opportunity for the fighters to, to win a contract. And uh, especially a promotion of that caliber, you know. So I think the opportunity for the fighters is great and they felt it. So, yes, I had to, we we had to take most of the Bulgarian guys so that we can fill the venue and generate that, uh, that hype. But to make things even better, we obviously matched them against uh, the, the top challengers from other countries. 
and we wanted to go just a little bit beyond Europe. So we have a Lebanese guy on the fight card. We have a Brazilian guy on the fight card, which is good because Bulgaria is uh, geographically is very close to the Middle East and to Central Asia. So I just wanted to open that uh, market a little bit. And yeah, I mean, o- overall, the fight card looks just exceptional. I, I don't think there will be a single weak uh, fight in, in that card. Yeah, definitely. I mean, obviously, you've got your main event, Dimitrov versus uh, Zelenevkov. Um, yeah. And uh, Kostander versus Valentinov as well. So, I mean, it's going to be... Uh, it's going to be, you know, some big, big shots landed, I'm guessing, in this. I think that's what it is as well with bare knuckle being so new. And, you know, MMA guys coming over or boxing guys coming over. Because it's something different, they want to t- test themselves in this new environment, in this new sport, and, you know, see how they get on. Yeah. Um, as a fighter myself, I think back in the day, if you were Brazil or a wrestler or a boxer, if you were any good guy in your discipline, it didn't matter much, and, and it didn't it didn't matter much until you mentioned MMA. And yeah. Unless you competed in MMA, people were like, "Yeah, you know, you're good, <laughs> but you, did you did you fight in MMA?" You know. Yeah. And I think that's what BKFC is doing right now. Like you could yeah. be an MMA guy. Eh, that's not bad, but. Did you fight in bare knuckle? Because <laughs> we know in MMA you can still rely to a certain extent on your grappling. You can stall the game. Uh, you can keep close distance and use the clinch and whatnot to yeah to, to try and use other skills. But BKFC is just the most the like the best test yeah. to your heart and bravery. You can't hide in bare knuckle. You cannot no, hide in bare knuckle. Yeah, the ring, it being the circular ring, you know, there's nowhere to hide. There's no corners to get into absolutely. or get out of and things. It's just the, the ring's built for action. Yeah. Uh, it, it is unbelievable. I can't wait. Yeah. I love, I, you know, it's one of the reasons I fell in love with bare knuckle because there is, like I say, there is nowhere to hide and it's just action, yeah, action same, all the same time. Here. Same here. I think uh, a lot of MMA fights have become... Uh, an opportunity for the fighters to build career and that's why they're trying not to risk right and to use the rules and then snitch a victory by uh, judges decision or whatnot yeah bkfc just completely strips this yeah that's out. it you mean you get a takedown in the last you, 10 seconds of a round in mma you know, you're most likely going to win that round, aren't you? So, exactly. like you say, yeah. you can you can play the rules and, yeah. you know, like you say, grapple and lie on top of them for five rounds. And run. And a lot of running. Run. Yeah, yeah. That's it. <laughs> Hold them against the fence for five rounds. It's, you know, it kind of, some fights can be boring, can't they? Yeah. Um. So, yeah, the process there was, you mentioned it already, it was something I was going to ask about as well. So, you held the tryouts as well. You had some guys come over from America, BKFC. Uh, Correct. To help yes. run that as well. Correct. Yeah, we had two representatives from BKFC, uh, Nelson Lopez and Lil Sarge. They helped us. Uh, the trials turned up really good. We had almost forty-five participants. Uh, a few of them from abroad. They paid their own expenses. Everyone was there for business. Yeah. They were not there to to make social media posts or or whatnot. They just came for business and. It was very tight organizationally. It went smooth and we had a big list. It was actually pretty hard to choose who's going to fight and, and to structure the fight card in, in terms of the fight order because everyone had a substantial amount of experience uh, and, and background. Like we, we don't have any beginners. Everyone is at least champion in sambo wrestling or boxing yeah. or MMA guys. So. It's pretty impressive, and I hope uh, the audience would would appreciate it. I'm sure they will, and like you say, getting these big names to come over as well to this sport, it, you know, it highlights it even more, doesn't it? And gets the gets the gets it out there more as well, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah it's going to be. So, who's who would you say is your uh, your ones to look out for? What fight have you got? Your kind of, I'm sure you've the ball matched very well, anyways. But have oh, you got one that you're looking forward to in particular. Where do I start, man? Well, 
frankly speaking, uh, I like I said, I don't think I can isolate one fight that that might be not as exciting. I, I yeah. don't think there will be a single fight like this. Uh, but we have really good matchups, uh, in my opinion. Wilhelm Ott, he fought on uh, Abu Dhabi Warriors back in 2016 from Austria. Uh, he's fighting one of our top Bulgarian competitors at the moment, uh, Vladislav Kanchev. You know, this is going to be huge. Kauyan Kolev was a Dana White Contender Series participant. He's fighting the Lebanese um, Abdul, uh, the Polish guy with Marian. I mean, man, the Romanian Lupu. You, you should see his knockouts, man, in Instagram. He's really heavy hands and, and it just keeps on and on. You know, every fight on the card is extremely exciting. Obviously, looking forward for the main event because I fought uh, against Dimitrov um, years ago. Him and his uh, twin brother, I fought both of them, were really good friends and they're exceptional athletes. And then Zhilyaskov is a student of mine who who did uh, not bad in MMA, not bad in Jiu-Jitsu, but his strength is boxing. Yeah. So and they already fought one time in MMA, and right. I mean this time is going to be really interesting to see in that new rules who who's gonna dominate. Uh, yeah. Dimitrov likes to to tackle and and smash on the floor like ground and pound. That's his strength. Zhilyaskov, good hands, good on his feet, but then Dimitrov is an athlete of of a just different level. He's a three times world champion in combat sambo. Um, so man, <laughs> I just I, I and, and I can't even vouch if you ask me to to bet on who's gonna win. I can't, I can't. <laughs> it sounds like it's gonna be an unbelievable card. I cannot wait. Yeah. Seventeenth uh, November in Sofia. If you can yes. make it over to Bulgaria, um, like I say, download the BKFC app, uh, and you get to see all the live events on there as well. So, uh, have you got anyone that you want to give a, a thanks to or a shout out to? Any coaches gyms or anything like that along it's helped you no, i just want to thank i want to thank you for the invitation and obviously the main man david feldman for building such an um, interesting and disruptive rule set and for putting his sweat money into this um, and i'm just super honored to be part of this organization and i hope uh, it will be a long-term relationship Oh, I'm sure it will be. I'm sure it will be. I'm sure that once the once the, the Bulgarian crowd sees what's going on and get a taste of the sport, get to see it, <laughs> it's good. You know, they'll fall in love. They'll fall in love. How's how's Ben Hook kind of seen in Bulgaria right now? Is it is it well, well known or? So I, I was surprised actually to find out a lot of people know uh, uh, about it, and it seems that we we haven't started the official campaign yet on the advertising. So just on what the fighters uh, posted on their social media feed, tickets are, are selling daily. Like we have almost 400 tickets sold. We're two months and a half away from the event. And for Bulgaria, that is not the usual pattern of purchasing tickets. People typically purchase tickets closer to the dates or on the day of the event, you know, yeah. last minute. Uh, so that's a really good in indicator. And... I think people that are not familiar with the rules uh, it, are being attracted by by the name because it's bare knuckle, you know. So it's like, yeah. well, uh, that's got to be something interesting. And obviously, the the level of the fighters, their names, their reputation. So yeah, I, I think Bulgaria would embrace that rule set and. Like I said, one of the reasons I wanted to attract uh, BKFC in Bulgaria is because in our region, uh, the Balkan countries, East Europe, Turkey, Greece, uh, Poland, and all these countries around us, society in general appreciates martial arts. We don't see Bernaco as a sort of vicious, uh, aggressive type of sport. We understand, I think the fans understand how much bravery, skill, yeah. and sweat has to, has to be put in, in play in order for someone to step in that ring. So in 
in that sense, I think it's a very friendly market to to explore. Not not just Bulgaria, obviously, all the countries around us. It's a very good place to for any promotion uh, in the martial arts to 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 try and explore. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it's it's a it's a beautiful violence. Is the way I like to describe bare knuckle. You know, it's beautiful violence. Yeah. It's it's raw. Uh, it's it's almost like art. You know that what these guys create in the ring. Exactly. It's um, yeah. it's not just you know thugs going. You know, there's there's an artistry to it, isn't there? A lot, a lot. The art yeah. and, in my opinion, the the courage and and the bravery. Like this, every man that steps in that rule set is exceptionally brave and and courageous. Yeah, it takes a lot. It does. It takes big old balls. That's what it takes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and massive heart as well. <laughs> uh, look, Lubo, I really appreciate your time and thank you very much for coming on. Hopefully, I'll get you on pleasure. again as well, closer to the event. And uh, yeah, keep in touch, and we'll speak soon. It was my pleasure. Thanks for the uh, invitation. Thank you, man. Speak to you Thank later. Bye bye. There he is, Lubo. What a lovely man. Uh, really appreciate his time coming on. Uh, hope everyone enjoys the, uh, the the rest of the Sunday. Uh, some breaking news as well that came just yesterday, just after I'd done my podcast, and I was saying that there was no there was no news on the prospect show. BKFC UK. Uh, 14th of October at the Olympia in Liverpool. That's where this, the prospect show is going to be happening. So make sure you get your tickets for that. Um, again, if you can't, then download the BKFC app and uh, you'll be able to watch it on there. But you know, Liverpool, what a fighting town as well to have that in. It's going to be uh, it's going to be an unbelievable show. Uh, the very best of luck, everyone. I'll speak to you all soon. Thanks very much to everyone in the comments. Much appreciate. It. Thanks very much to uh, everyone that's liked and subscribed. Much love, and I'll speak to you soon. Fight fans joining us and the millions watching around the world. Albert.